for example, uh, today there's also a free Microsoft Word add-on where you can install a TechUI plugin for your Microsoft Word and then you have this uh, you know, TechUI RPA uh, menu where you have all these options. You know, whether it's uh, automating using computer vision, live mode to do live debugging, uh, and, and things like you're know, setting up the options and then running the automation. So this is an example where you go to Google, search a particular stock name and collect the stock price and save everything to results. Okay. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, I won't demonstrate this because uh, we just want to uh, keep more time for Q&A. But these examples and more is all available on TechUI GitHub page. Okay. And, and things like uh, if you have a Excel file, you can use Excel plugin and the Excel plugin will let you configure all your data you need to configure and parameters for your RPA. So very straightforward. Yes. Like Excel file, I say, hey, I want to um, automate getting the stock prices of all these three stocks. So you just need to configure your Excel file to have all these three prices. Uh, you can just run Tech UI to uh, automate the process of getting the prices of these three stocks using this uh, robot. Yeah. So it, it's something new to some of you because this is a word document. How can this be a automation script? But this is the real automation script for Tech UI. It's very readable. Yeah, and things like if you let's say you want to click a start menu, you say say click, take a snapshot, you know, of the start button, you know, and then you can run the automation. You literally click on the snapshot here, you know, and on the screen, and you can do things like keyboard, uh, maybe your Windows key, and then you do a E to open Internet Explorer. So all these things can be done. Desktop app, web application, um, command line apps, all these things can be automated. Okay, so let me go back to this main page. And there's also a free Google Cloud. So if today you want to run uh, on Google Cloud, you can. There's a Colab notebook where you can run Tech UI human language on the cloud. And you can run up to five sessions on Google Cloud. Um, on your phone, you can do automation as well on your phone. And for those of you who are familiar with Python, you can use the Python version of Tech UI to do the same thing. But it's just that you write your automation in Python language instead of like English or Chinese or, or Hindi and Tamil. Okay. Then uh, there's also VS Code extension. If uh, some of you guys prefer to use VS Code editor, you can download it. You have all the syntax highlighting. Otherwise, uh, other common editor will be Notepad++, Sublime, uh, but I, I primarily I use a, a Mac, so normally I I edit things using the VI editor, you know. So I don't use a IDE not normal usually. Yeah, but for some of you prefer to use IDE to be more productive, uh, VS Code extension you have, and and you can try that out. Okay, and there's also a Python version of Tech UI which I continue to uh, maintain as a personal project. People from the community created the C sharp version of Tech UI. Uh, a Go version is on work in progress and a node red version of tech UI. So node red is more like what you call it a GUI based, you know, event driven uh, automation platform where you can combine thousands and thousands of uh, node packages like IoT packages to get data in, you automate using tech UI and you do some other downstream automation. Like uh, some of the things could be on LinkedIn, on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, and you can chain your smart home uh, automation into Tech UI as well using Node Red. Then Power Automate Desktop. If you are a fan of our Power Automate Desktop, you'll be happy to know that both Tech UI and Power Automate Desktop can automate each other. So when you create a script in Tech UI or Power Automate Desktop and you decide to shift to the other two, it's easy to uh, reuse your existing uh, automation assets. A lot of uh, orchestrator that's created for Tech UI, and mostly they are created by other uh, open source RPA suppliers like uh, Open RPA, Open Flow, Open Bots, and Robocop. All of them can automate Tech UI scripts today, right? This is a uh, 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 draft roadmap we had uh, since the start of the year. Uh, this project being quite a number of uh, uh, years already. So. Enterprise by Design. Yeah, you can get all this info here on the main page uh, for the GitHub page. And there's also a learn uh, a free course for you to do. You probably take half a day to finish, and then you'll get a batch after that. Uh, we are still in the process of rolling out the batch uh, functionality. Once it's done, you'll be able to get the batch. But in the, uh, yeah, I think when we get that in, then we'll start to promote more. Right now, we didn't link to that uh, course because if you take the course now, you don't get a batch. You have to so-called uh, retake the multiple 
choice questions at the end again another time to do it so once we get that ready we'll put a link here so uh, potential users can come and take the course e- everything is free there's nothing that's a paid uh, thing <laughs> over here so at the end here are some of the credits and ultimately we are sponsored by uh, the Singapore government and under the National Research Foundation so somebody has paid the bill already so there's no need for us to try to make money in charge for our service or a software yeah and next year when we move to become a, a community uh, non-profit foundation then all the more there's no need to pay like python foundation you know there's no need to pay to use python it doesn't make sense so that yeah will become something like that it becomes a software that's free that's open source forever and nobody has to pay anything to use it and if you can use it to create a software for other people for your clients and make money that's great but you don't have to pay us anything there's uh, really no need it's like let's say you build software for your clients for your company for your colleagues with python you don't have to pay python to use it correct yeah that's the same for tech ui and that's the spirit of uh, open source that we want to embrace we we don't we will never want to be part of a vc funded company because when you become a VC father company, you have the first thing you need to do is to you have to segregate your users. You know, how about you know some of them will be the paying users, some of them will be the free users, and you got to provide features and services that are, are differentiated for the two groups of people. So we don't want that to happen. So we are gonna remain free and open source forever. And uh, yeah, that that's it. That's all I want to present today, and I leave the rest of the the time for this session for question. Okay. Uh, they're saying that uh, Kira Kami wants to know GitHub Copilot already does this to some extent. Oh, GitHub Copilot. The type of software is more for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is to help generate code. Let me see. Uh, what's GitHub Copilot? So GitHub Copilot is more a uh, generic uh, programming software for auto fill of uh, code. Whereas Tech UI, when you write your human language, each line you write, let's say you say, uh, uh, click send button. When you're automating an email so what it does it convert this click send button into actually more than 100 lines of javascript code and automate it with a uh, javascript code so that's the difference it's more specific it's more targeted it's a very specific for automation domain versus uh, copilot copilot is too general you can't actually use copilot to create rpa and uh test automation if you can the QA community will be jobless tomorrow right <laughs> so it's a bad thing for, for QA community <laughs> so no no you can't you can't do that question yeah. asked was uh, what about docker is it necessary in web development yes there's actually a docker image for tech ui you can join the telegram group chat I, I can share there i'm still in the process of consolidating all the different resources so what, once i done right i will put up a link from the github page but for now uh I don't think we track anywhere the Docker image, but there is already a Docker image. Yeah, and can, you can use it on AWS, you can use it on Azure, GCP, up to you. Doesn't necessarily, we are vendor agnostic. And how to solve the SEA problem of React? So one of our attendees wants to know how is machine learning different from RPA? General, there are two main ways of automate uh, work and tasks today one way is using rules so you define the rules what you need to do step by step based on the rule define your automation will do exactly what you're told the the you know whereas machine learning is you are still defining rules but you don't define the rules step by step you define the rules by putting a lot of data in to the uh, and build an ml model and when you have an ml model it's actually a collection of rules it's just that you don't write it in English step by step the rules are weights that the computer can use so that next time you are given certain input it can give you certain outputs with a level of confidence so something like uh, what is common for ML model and AI would be let's say computer vision you want to recognize whether uh Face recognition, for example, maybe for security testing, you want to make sure if the person who's entering the building is a registered employee of the one of the companies in the building. For that, you have to use AI and machine learning. But for RPA, it could be, for example, you want to make sure when somebody uh, enters a building, his record is tracked in a, a company's uh, administration building administration system. Or maybe they are tracking the COVID the visitors and uh, uh, full-time staff that's coming in and out of the building. For those that work, is rule-based. Then you use RPA. So you can combine the two together. Two different ways of doing automation. So 
doesn't mean you use RPA, you cannot combine with machine learning. Doesn't mean you use machine learning, you can't also tap on RPA. You can actually combine the two together. But you need to people with the machine learning knowledge and people with RPA knowledge to form a team to create that、uh, solution together. You can't do it by yourself. There are some people, a small number of people that can do both. But、uh, usually, people tend to specialize and be very good either at machine learning kind of work or RPA kind of work. So it's better to form a small team to do it together. Got it, Ken. So、uh, I guess、um, I I want to build on this question. So. If if、uh, you already know how to solve the problem, you can define it in terms of steps and go for RPA. And if if you're not that sure, and if you want to figure out like what the weight should be, it is something that you can only understand from learning about the data. Then go for machine learning, and you can also maybe go for a hybrid model, as you explained. Yes, that's right. All right, awesome. So we have one more question about what are other solutions for RPA. The real answer is there are like at least hundred options for RPA software. So if I tell you all of them, you'll be overwhelmed. But、uh, broadly speaking, I think there are two categories. One is a paid commercial RPA software. One is a free co-、uh, RPA software. The paid one would be those like UI Path, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, and up and coming、uh, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. All those are the paid commercial software. And in terms of pricing, the Microsoft.、Uh, Option is the cheapest and most affordable. So Blue Prism、uh, executives they are very worried <laughs> about、uh, Microsoft offering. Yeah, but that's for the paid side. But let's say you want to look at open source and free.、Uh, in general, the open source the top few would be、uh, TechUI is one of them. You have also Robocop is、uh, funded by VC. I think they raised over twenty over million dollars already. And、uh, one that I like a lot is the Open RPA. So do check out Open RPA. Open RPA. Essentially, it's a it's a clone of UI Path. <laughs> really, you you check the GitHub page, the interface, how it works.、Uh, it reminds me of UI Path, and it reminds many people of UI Path. But it's a free, it's fully free, it's fully open source. There's no license fee, nothing. You just take and use it. Yeah, it, it's very similar to UI Path. Yeah, you can try that out. Then some others would be open bots. That's also a VC funded one, but not so much money is raised. But、uh, in, in general, things like Robocop. Open bots, they tend to find a way to monetize because they are funded by VC. So there's a need to have a run. They have this calculation called run rate,、uh, monthly recurring revenue, and stuff like that. So all these are important to them. So they'll find a way to either charge you for their service or charge you for paid software on the cloud. So all these are unavoidable. You have some form of vendor lock-in in the sense because if you're storing the data you create on their cloud, then that means it's on their cloud, right? You can't easily migrate to another vendor. So Uh, it's a trade-off, lah. I I won't. I can't say what is good, what is bad. It's more of、uh, the solution you choose must meet your needs and、uh, your budget. Yeah. The really free one, it will be Open RPA. Do check it out. Uh, or Tech UI. Yeah. Those are totally free. Even you want to pay us, there's no option on the web page for you to pay us. <laughs> so it's it's fully free. It's open source and fully free. We have another really amazing question, and it is like, what was the most challenging task for you to build in Tech UI, and how did you solve it? So I I have some plan about uh having a recorder where people can record a video and annotate with voice and at the end of the recording you have an automation script with the comments of the voice that can work across web pages and desktop app. But、uh, I I hope to do that、uh, in the coming quarter. You know maybe Q one next year. I think that's the most challenging I've come across so far because it needs to combine computer vision, it needs to combine rule base. You need to combine a little bit of machine learning as well. I don't know how successful we can build that, but it's、uh, worth trying. The other most challenging one that、uh, I've come across would be may- maybe the integration with Excel. Like for example, today in Tech UI, you can automate Excel with just、uh, the usual Excel instruction, but to do that well is really really hard because Excel turns out that、uh, there's so many usage and possibility that actually to Create that feature. I need to create about two hundred test cases just for that simple feature. So it's it's not technically hard, but it's very tedious to actually create that integration to pass two hundred test cases. It's so hard. But initially, when I try to create a feature, I was thinking, never mind. At most ten test cases, if we pass, we are good. But as I start to explore more about Excel and the test cases and how you use it. I realize that no, if you create an integration that you have ten test cases, you are not going to meet the needs of most of the Excel users. The needs are quite broad. So in the end, we spend a.、Uh, I think I spent at least a、uh, a couple of months to add that in, and, and it's. I I think it's a it's a nightmare <laughs> looking back, but、uh, I hope that it was done because it's、uh, good for the users. But it's just that 
the effort needed is way more than what I initially estimate. I, I'm not an accountant, so I actually don't know so much about Excel until I start to automate it and integrate it with Tech UI. Then I realized, uh, wow, there's like 200 test cases to pass before we can put to production. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Namaste. <laughs>